Good morning! I've had a few questions on the video so I thought I'd do a quick Q&A and answer some of those questions. First, I've got my number plate. Should I ever travel to America, I've got the number plate for my own car. Right, first question is, can you play any tees you like? And the answer is yes, you can. Over here in England, there tends to be just three tees, ladies, gents, and gents competition. And usually you can't play the gents competition for casual golf. So no matter your age or your ability, you get stuck on the same set of tees as all the other blokes. Thailand is different. There could be four, five, or even six tees. So you get to choose. Generally, there's a ladies. Sometimes there'll be a seniors, which is just two yards behind. Then you've got a forward men's tee, and then a back men's tee, and then you've got an expert men's tee, and then way back you've got the professional's tee. So you can choose a set of tees for your age, your ability, how far you hit it, and whether the golf course is wet after a thunderstorm. Now, November is coming out of rainy season, so they're generally a little bit wet. When you get to the end of November, they are dry. December, January, February, they are very dry. And then going into March, you're heading into the next rainy season, so they get a little bit wet again. So you've got to be aware of what the weather's been doing the past couple of weeks or whatever before you arriving on holiday. I would normally pick 6,000 yards when it's wet and 6,500 when it's dry. Next question is, are five balls a thing in Thailand? And yes, they are. Monday to Friday, you can normally play in a five ball, but you don't see that many. What I would say on this trip is I saw more five, six and more groups than I've ever, ever seen before. In fact, probably if you put all of my previous visits together, it would come to less than this trip. And I think it's because there have been much fewer golfers than normal. Golf courses are relatively empty. It doesn't look like it on some of my videos, but really they are relatively empty. And so they're allowing groups to come together if they wish. Never saw a course marshal, but then you never do. They tend to be sat in their golf car in the trees, in the shade, fast asleep. But it's not five balls that really cause slow play. Let me read you something from a card from one of the courses. There's the local rules in here, but it also goes on to say, Golfer with handicap over 18 is not recommended. See, if you're shooting 95 to 105 at home on your ordinary golf course, when you go to Thailand, there may be water on 12, 13, 14, or as many as 17 holes. And instead of there being 30 bunkers, there might be 100 bunkers. I'm not kidding. Siam Old Course has 101 bunkers. So it's considerably more difficult. And if you're losing two, maybe even three shots on, uh, three balls on a bad round, well, you can probably double that in Thailand, which all adds up to more shots, shooting 120, and obviously that takes more time. So you've always got to be aware of what's behind you and actually call people through. One of the popular spots for calling a group through is a drink stop. So every four holes, there is a booth of some sort. You go in, you get your drinks and you sit down. When the next group comes off the green behind you, you say, would you like to go through? Chances are four holes later, when they're overheated and flaked out, they'll be sat down in the drink stop and they'll say to you, do you want to come back through? That happens often amongst golfers as opposed to casual golfers. The other thing that slows things up is gambling. The Japanese and the South Koreans, they love to gamble. And I'm not talking about, let's play 18 holes for five pounds. I'm talking about betting on individual holes, individual shots, individual putts. So they're taking their time. And 
the Japanese get quite loud and quite excitable about it. How can you tell if there's three Japanese four balls on the golf course today? Well, you can hear them from, from about three holes away. They get quite loud. Having said that, I once played golf with two Japanese guys. They were single figures. They were deadly serious. They were blinkered. They were focused. And all three of us shot around about 77, 78 around Siam Waterside. Then we sat down and we had a meal afterwards and without me knowing a word of Japanese and them knowing a word of English, we had a really good time and got shit-faced really. We were drinking. We had a good time. So gambling slows things down. The other thing that slows things down are a particular a particular country. They don't play ready golf. What you'll see in my videos is I, as the longest driver, I'm usually hitting my second shot last. And what you'll see in the video is cart paths going down, carts going down the cart path towards the green. So whoever I'm playing with is off to play their third shot. And then I jump into my car and I go off to the green. So I'm overtaking them, they're overtaking me. And we eventually all tap in at about the same time. So this particular European nationality do not play ready golf. They play the very strict, the furthest away from the hole place first and everyone else stands around with their thumb up their arse waiting. Even if this guy is 72 years old and only hits his driver 120 yards and you are 120 yards in front of him, you gotta wait. I've been shouted at and told off many times by these people for playing out of turn. And of course they like to go to the cheaper courses where it is permitted to walk, which makes them even slower. They probably don't know what it's like to go around a golf course in three hours in golf carts, which is possible if you have nothing in front of you. So wherever they appear in Europe, whether it's Spain, Portugal, Cyprus, Turkey or even in Thailand, They've got a reputation of being very slow. Another thing that slows things up is never being ready to play. Some people just aren't. So it's very much a bit like home, really. You come across the same sort of people. The other thing that slowed things down, as I found out, was something called aim point. I don't know what aim point is. I had to look it up. But the guy I was playing with was using aim point. So on his 30 foot putt, he would walk and stand either side the hole the full length of the putt. Then he'd point his fingers at the hole as if that did anything at all. Then he went through the hole just in Rose routine of lining up the ball and making sure his putt is pointing in the right way. The end result was I putt in about 16 seconds. He was putting in about a minute, five seconds. And I've been doing the editing on here and I've seen it. What you see is me having a go at a 15 footer. What you don't see is me the, for a minute just stood there going, get on with it, mate. I couldn't convince him that aim point did not work in Thailand. You see, with grain, grain does funny things to the golf ball. You can have a putt that is sloping right to left, but the grain is going left to right. So your putt is straight. But if you've got a slope that's left to right and the grain is left to right, you have a look at your putt, and you, your 30 foot putt, and you think, hmm, that's about 18 inches. But then the grain comes into effect. The ball starts turning down grain. Because there's no resistance, there's no friction, friction to the golf ball. And all of a sudden your 30 foot putt is 20 feet right. I'm not kidding then you've got to go through the whole bloody aim point routine again. It's incredibly slow. What would be much better would be turning to your caddy and actually saying, what do you think of this one? And she'll say, one flag left, down. So now you've got a direction and a speed. And it makes life a lot easier and a lot quicker. And it will also improve your score. 
So these are all things that slow stuff down in Thailand. And it's not necessarily the five balls who are doing it. You can get a quick five ball if they're playing ready golf and they're actually taking advice from the caddy. Next question was, does the humidity make the ball go less distance? And the answer to that is no. And that's because of the temperature. You know, when you hit a golf ball, you get a circle on the face of your driver that's about a three quarters of an inch in diameter. The ball squishes against the driver face and it is the ball reforming back into a ball that gives you a higher ball speed than your actual club head speed. Now a golf ball, its performance is reliant on temperature. So the warmer the ball is, the more it squishes, the more ball speed you get. Equally, when you're back here at home in winter and it is two degrees, the ball doesn't squish, so you don't get as much ball speed. The best way of describing it is in Britain, in summer, it's 20 degrees, my six iron will carry into a par three, somewhere around about 162 yards. In Thailand, it can be as much as 167 yards. And then in Britain, back in winter, when it's two degrees, it can be as low as 155 yards. So you see there's a huge, huge difference in what you get out of the golf ball, depending on temperature. So humidity doesn't really make a lot of difference. Next question is caddies and golf carts. Gentleman said, I'm not keen on having a caddy and I really hate golf carts. Well, unless you know grain very well yourself, perhaps you live in Florida or somewhere where you've always got Bermuda greens, you won't understand grain. And without understanding grain, you're gonna take an awful lot of putts and chips and putts, you know, instead of chipping it up close, you'll chip it 20, 30 feet by. As I say, I've, I've been doing editing here and I'm just sat, stood there watching and waiting for my turn to go and you see a 30 foot putt going past the flag and it goes 30 feet past, followed by, oh no, please stop, or oh no, not again. You really do need a caddy. And it also helps when you're on compulsory cart path and some, you're carrying an umbrella, forget the camera, carrying an umbrella and the caddy's carrying an armful of clubs for you. So you do need caddies. As to golf carts, I hate them. I really do. When you walk, what tends to happen is as you're approaching your golf ball, you're looking at the green, you're looking at the flag, you're looking at the hazards, you're feeling the wind, and you know more or less what club you're gonna hit before you even get to your ball. When you're in a golf cart, you don't get that. If you can drive the fairway, you arrive at your ball and you go, where the hell am I? So yeah, I don't like golf carts. And when it's on the cart path and your ball is 60 yards away in the rough and you can't even see it, you're just guessing at where it might be and your caddy's taking six clubs across just, just in case you need different clubs for a different lie, then that really is a pain in the backside. But on the other hand, the sun boils my head. So having some shade above me, having some breeze in my face, having the carrying capacity for all the drink I get through, I can easily drink four, four and a half liters on a bright sunny day out there and having a bag of ice and all the other things like your towel, your umbrella, uh, I put a flannel in the bag of ice so I can wash myself down when I get really do get overheated. Golf carts are a very good idea and it saves you walking in that bright sunshine if you are if you struggle with it like I do. So yes, while I wouldn't have one here, I will have one there, even on the golf courses that permit you to walk. Next question is, why do you keep missing putts and shots because of your camera, your record button or whatever? 
Well, the shutter button on this Canon M50 is quite large. The record button for videos is very small. And because I tend to be in a bit of a hurry, you go and press the button and you haven't actually pressed it. I, I think it's probably suffering a little bit. So what happens is, is you don't press the button, you play your shot or your putt, then you press the button to stop the recording, but you've actually just start, started the recording. So now, as I'm carrying the camera, I'm recording my feet, the sky, the grass, the trees. Then when I relocate the camera to for my next putt, I press the button to start the recording, but of course I'm stopping the recording. So perhaps a bit more care, but when you've got a camera, you tend to rush because you stand out from the crowd. You are the tall poppy. The person on the tee box does not see the guy who is taking a minute for a putt and then a minute for the next putt. What he sees is a camera. Same in the fairway. They don't see the guy who's taken three swings to get out of a fairway bunker. They see a camera. So yes, I do rush and sometimes that is a detriment to the videos. Is there any other questions? I had a question about my handicaps. Should my handicap be lower? Because I seem to play well on camera. Well, there's a big difference between playing on camera and playing in the competition on a Sunday at, the, at your club with a card in your hand. When I'm on camera, I'm thinking about the shot in front of me. I'm thinking about the setup of the camera. I'm thinking about what I might say in the video. The last thing I'm thinking of is my score. In fact, when I come off the golf course, I have no idea what my score is. But when you've got a card in your hand, while you're waiting to putt on the fifth green, you're thinking, I really need to hold this putt because I normally slice out of bounds on the seventh. So your mind wanders to negative thoughts. Equally, when you've got four holes to go and you are two under your handicap, if you have foolishly added up your score as you're going round, you can feel under an immense amount of pressure over the last four holes. In fact, I did that to myself. My second round at Cao Kiao, I knew what my score was, I knew what my target was, and I was under immense pressure over the last six holes to actually achieve something. You'll have to wait and see what happens. But when you are aware of your score, you certainly do an awful lot worse than when you haven't a bloody clue. And when I'm on camera, I generally don't have a bloody clue. I'm just thinking in the moment, right here, right now, one shot at a time. And that makes a difference to your score. But the one thing I question I would ask you as a five slash six handicap, because I wander around either side of that line, why is it wrong for me to shoot five under my handicap when many high handicappers shoot 10, 11, 12, 14 under their handicap from time to time? You know, the concern ought to be on the person who can shoot 14 under in a competition rather than someone who shoots four or five under their handicap in a casual round of golf when it counts for nothing. So that's all the questions at the moment. Keep firing them in. If there's anything you want to know, uh, just ask and I will probably put together a Q&A towards the end of the series. I've got two more videos to edit that's all I've been doing here, which begs the question, how long does it take to edit a video? Well, first I've got to put it all on my phone to do Shot Tracer. Shot Tracer takes about two hours. Shot Tracer is pretty rubbish. It's not very accurate. If I was to get the PC version on this thing that you can't see, that's $90 a year and is very good but I haven't got $90 a year, so I will not know how good it is. 
The total time for editing can be between five and eight hours depending on how much I put into it and whether I redo it. You see, once I've done it, I watch it through. Then I will put another load of elements on the video and I will watch it through. Then I'll put the voiceover and the music on and I will watch it through. Then I will render it and I will watch it through. And then you've got the hour and a half upload to YouTube. So a 20 minute video starting with approximately one hour's worth of clips takes between five and eight hours to actually complete because I'm watching a 20 minute video three, four, five times over. So that's it for now. I can see on the screen here we're hitting 21 minutes, which is a bit long for a Q&A, but you want to know? I got to give you the answers as best I can. Cheerio.